Thank you for your insight and uh, address, Mr. Vr Sharma, Managing Director, Jindal Steel and Power Limited, one of the renowned steel technocrats of the country. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we thank him for his valuable presence and time. He uh, has to leave us uh, right now as he has an obligation uh, to take care of. Ladies and we are indeed changing the world with technology. And it gets even better if it is accompanied with a feel-good factor. With its motto of smile with science, American pre court lives by our festival's theme, innovation is future. With these words, I would invite Dr. Dr. Shubh Gautam, Chief Technical Architect, American pre court California, to kindly share. Thank you, Saroj. Sri Dilip Oman, Sri Sanjay Sharma, Sri Satpati, Sri Pankaj Satija, Sri Aroda, honorable dignitaries, delegates, dear friends, and of course, Monica, you are the star performer. God bless you and Metallurgic team for doing this. I dare not talk about steel technology. The kind of depth this room has, it would not be appropriate to talk about steel technology that leaves with small talk on innovation, the need for innovation. Let me, let me make it a little interesting. Let me ask you a question. Academics has been the slowest moving business model globally. They say a university's balance sheet grows by 1%. That's Harvard. If you grow by 2%, you are Berkeley, where you have 15 Nobel laureates. Academics do not grow in excess of 2%. If academics is the slowest growing model, if I would ask you a question, which country had the largest number of universities in top 10 100 years back? Anybody would like to shout out? Which country had the largest number of universities in top 10 100 years back? If I would make a list of top 10 universities 100 years back, which country had the maximum number of universities? Uh, not 100 years back, if I made it 2,000 years back, maybe Nalanda, but not 100 years back. I would have been happy to hear that. Anybody? Oxford, Cambridge, yes. Germany. Germany had the highest number of universities in top 10 100 years back. If I move that business model fast forward today, if I would ask you, collate a list of top 10 universities in the world, which country has the honors of having the maximum number of universities? Of course, United States. How did this happen? How does this happen for a business model that is the slowest growing model in corporate history? Innovation. It was because United States innovated education. They spent and understood what are the three legs of innovation and why innovation is essential. I'm an extremely proud Indian. My roots are here. Stay in San Francisco. We have global businesses. And American pre code is not a steel company. It's a specialty chemical company. So when we had this offer from one of the big five and they said, India does not produce electro-galvanized steel, I did not believe them. I said, it's not possible. With a capacity closer to 100 million tons, how can India not produce electro-galvanized steel? We put a team of people together, and yes, they were correct. We did not produce electro-galvanized steel. And electro-galvanized steel is no rocket science. Electro-galvanized steel is poor man's special steel. If you go forward, there are many more special techniques that we have today, but electro-galvanized steel was not rocket science. We set up India's first electro-galvanizing come color tandem coding unit in Valsad, Gujarat, and that was dedicated to the country in June 2019. While doing so, I met at least 60 top professionals from the steel industry, across board. And my question was, have you worked on electro-galvanizing technology? The universal answer was, forget working on electro-galvanizing technology, No one had seen electro-galvanizing line. What is the underlying importance of innovation? Unless we innovate, we will be extinct. 
Innovation is not about growth. Innovation is not about invention. Innovation is about structuring future. If all of us have to write down where do we want to be in 2030, the question is what is it we do today to reach 2030? The only thing is we structure things daily, weekly, monthly. It's a box approach. Today what we do is we do quality management, we do Kaizen, we do ERP, Enterprise Resource Platform. All this is good for today. But where are we heading for tomorrow? In a matrix where a country has a per capita income of $1,800, is it fair to say what apply to United States should apply to India? Is it fair to say what applies to Japan applies to India? Of course not. We need products that work for this country. We need innovation which is country centric. India is a net net consumptive economy. And I doubt if we can ever aim to be exporting commodity because of the way the whole economic fiscal deficit is. Immediately after World War II, what did Japan do? They said, look, we have to export. I don't care, damn, we have to export. And this is in the journal, they say. And what did they do? They devalued yen overnight. 1955, Korea had independence. Exactly seven years after India, what did they do? They followed the Japanese model. They said the yen went to 120 against a dollar. Won goes to 1,200 against a dollar. Even today, won is 1,150. Can we afford that? So we have no choice. We have to innovate. We have to innovate on technology. We have to innovate on cost. We have to innovate on culture. Allow me to give you three examples of innovation that went wrong. Kellogg's is a leader in breakfast cereal technology. The CEO sits in Chicago and says, well, we've been in India for 25 years. India has not done well. But one day India will do well as far as Kellogg's is concerned. Why? Because Kellogg's believe in cereal, breakfast cereal, you add cold milk. This country eats hot breakfast. And when you put hot milk in a cereal, it might be a banana flavor or a vanilla flavor. It's a mush. Kellogg's was never successful, which is why we see Mohan Meekins come in and, and ramp Kellogg's all the way. That was a case with Harley Davidson. They said, well, we make the best motorcycles in the world. We are from the US. We're going to sell good motorcycles here. We're going to teach Indians how to drive motorcycles. We're going to tell you what a good motorcycle is. They had showrooms in Bangalore, in Gurgaon, in Bombay. They flopped. What they didn't realize is Hero Motors or Hero Honda then sold their lowest end models in urban cities and sold their top end model in rural cities. If you have three cars, why would you need a motorcycle? You need a motorcycle probably to go to a grocery shop or you drop your kid to a bus stop. Would you need a high end bike or a low end bike? This is the social infrastructure we live in this country with a per capita income of $1,800. Innovation needs to be seen from that perspective. If we don't, companies will go extinct. We cannot copy a country, a culture. We have to be self-sufficient innovation. Steel has been the cornerstone of human civilization. As a kid, when we grew up, what do we see? Man discovered fire and man discovered an ax. I don't know where that ax came from. Hunting ax or a hunting arrow or a hunting, whatever it is, but it was steel. American Iron and Steel Institute was founded in 1881. I've had the honor of being part of some of the meetings. It's a 140 year old institution. And what they say is shocking. Steel is the most inventive and least innovating of all the composite materials today on the planet. Even wood industry is more innovating than steel industry is. It is more inventive. We invent processes. We invent intertwining performance of steel, but we have not innovated the way we want to be. And on the sustainable side, we are responsible for depleting most of the zinc that is available in the planet. Or for a matter of fact, all of the metals. Why is it that we still have to think that if we don't have more zinc, we don't have more performance? It's not about, I'm giving you an example of metal coating because that's the industry I come from. That's for electro-galvanizing concerned. You apply zinc on a hard day process, you apply a minimum of 60 grams per square meter. You apply through electro-galvanizing process, you can do zero. You do through a thermal diffusion zinc process, not a vapor process, thermal diffusion zinc, you can go to subgrammages. 
Now let me tell you, if you were a supplier to aerospace industry or nuclear industry, the caveat is they would only accept a product which is produced by thermal diffusion zinc. So is zinc the performer or is the process the performer? Is technology the performer or is that technology innovation which gives you that result? A thermally diffused zinc steel component passes 8,000 hours of salt spray, 8,000 hours, and there's less zinc. How do we become more sustainable? How do we become more green? And what is that innovation pitch? You need to dream, we need to dream. What will we be remembered for? It's like saying, Professor Mohammed Yunus got the Nobel Prize for starting microfinance because he started the Grameen Bank in 1996. Since 1996 to 2019, they've given more than $300 billion in loan in increments of $15. It never went for a federal dispensation or a subsidy. Professor Mohammed Yunus has a vision of innovation and he said, poverty elevation, let me create a museum where you take a boy, a kid, a child, and say this was poverty. He went to the, the, the town square of Dhaka, hired 10 beggars. And this is after Grameen Bank. Look at the innovation standards he had. He hired 10 beggars and said, you beg, why do you beg? Let me give you $10 each. Buy bread, buy groceries, buy flowers, go to each house and ask them, do you want something else? They came back and said, wow, this daunting model is great. Can we have more money? His target was to hire 5,000 beggars in six months. He ended up hiring 500,000 beggars. He turned them into salesmen. Half of them came back and said, the sales is not my pitch. Begging is my pitch, I'll remain a beggar. Half of them said, no, we won't beg anymore. We've learned the art of salesmanship. Peer microfinance, we'll go and sell house to half. The balance, the last half said, look, uh, we'll be both salesmen and beggars. Some house are good for begging, some house are good for selling. Innovation is a need for an hour. Could be cost innovation for a country like India, could be technological innovation, or could be both. I compliment ArcelorMittal Nippon Steel for, for choosing India as a destination, for giving India that pride, investing in India. I congratulate you for being here. I, I really congratulate the speakers who are going to come and tell us great technologies about steel industry. And I wish all the best that we innovate and we show to the world what India and Indians can do as far as steel industry is concerned. Wishing Metallurgic a very bright conference. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day.